Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about pushing through it all. You know, every morning I wake up here, and you never knew, know really what to expect in the Philippines. A lot of the guys that have lived in the Philippines know what I'm talking about when I talk about this. There's always something going on. You know, there's always an issue or something like that. And it's just kind of something you have to learn to go with the flow, you know. And I remember one day I had to try to find an ATM. And we always try to use the same ATM all the time because usually that one's pretty good. Well, this one day, that one happened to be closed down. We ended up going to like about seven ATMs total before we found one that finally worked. Either they were shut down, they didn't have money, or they didn't have a connection, or the line was a mile long and I didn't want to wait an hour. You know, and these are some of the things that we have to push through here in the Philippines. The other day also, I had a little bit of issue with my, my, my health insurance company. It was a minor issue, but I just didn't want to deal with it. It was... It was um, an issue where they sent me a paper out because on my application each year that I got to fill out, I put down there that I have sciatica and they started wanting to know more about it. And I was trying to explain to them that, you know, it's not, it's not going to be an issue because it's basically covered by the VA. So you don't have to worry about that. It's fully covered by the VA, all the meds, everything's covered by them. Well, they still want to know all, all about that and try to find out more. So I sent them all the information, and I'm waiting now to hear it to find out. But the problem was I had to find out, find all these medical documents and all that stuff and hand it over to them. And it just kind of took up my time on a day that I was already busy, you know. And there's always something coming up, something that, you know, you have to worry about. And the newest thing here is now I heard something about a, a card that you can get through the government or something like that, and it's good because your, your vaccination card is not good enough. You need to get something else and get that verified and get this card from the government here, and that'll be good for going places when you need to go to places. I guess what they're getting ready for, it seems to be this way, and I'm not sure. I have to read through this thing a little bit more, and I sent it to my girlfriend so she could read through it too to see what it's all about. And when I find out about it and I find out more about it, I'm going to let you guys know probably too, okay? But it's some sort of card or something that you have to get, okay, Would you? You bring in your vaccine, you show them that, and then they give you some sort of document or card or something so you can you can travel wherever that you've been vaccinated. So I, I would tend to believe that at some point there's going to be some sort of checkpoint or something here. When Because when I read the article, I had her read it, and I said, what are you getting out of this? And, and she she's looking at it right now, and I, I believe she'll get the same thing out of it. But I'll let you guys know more when I hear more about that. There's always something that you have to push through. But this here thing sounds like it's pretty easy. You just have to fill out some sort of document, bring it in, and then hand it to them, and then they give you something else or something. I, I haven't read through it that much, but when I do find out more, I'll give you guys the the rundown on it and everything so you guys can do it too, and I'll give you guys the, the link and everything. So once I find out more about that, okay, guys? But anyway, a lot of the stuff here, if you have no patience, the Philippines is not for you, Okay. Because the Philippines has tons of paperwork. Everything is about paperwork. In the United States, we have a lot of paperwork, but they have a, a, some sort of act that they passed a long time ago to cut everything down to a minimum size. And even though a lot of our stuff is still really long, it's actually been cut down a lot from what they used to be because of that act. They, 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 they passed that act to cut down all the paperwork on everything so everything's more basic, including taxes and things like that. Anything that they can cut down on, they're supposed to cut down on. I think the Philippines might want to take a look at that act in the United States because it might help them a lot you know, to get through some of all this stuff because they do have a lot of paperwork issues over here for everything. Anything you apply for, it's a logistical mess. You know, I mean, even for the guys that are going through the SRV right now, it's a mess. You know, compared to to what it was for us in the beginning, it seems like the more things move forward, the more paperwork they throw at you, and the more things you hoops you have to jump through for things. And it's getting to be that way all over the world now, right now, with this COVID mess that we have going on, and and all the other messes that we have going on. But the other things that we we wake up to over here is we always hear about China, and that's another another issue that we always have to worry about. You know. But the biggest issue in, in the Philippines here is the, th the hoops you have to jump through. Um, sometimes when we go to the mall here, this is just during the quarantine thing. Obviously, this would be different if, if that goes away. We don't know what, what plans people have for us, the officials have for us after 
this COVID thing goes away and everybody's up to their 70% or whatever. We don't know what's going to happen. We really don't. And I think that those cards might have something to do with it. I'm a little worried about that, you know, because for some of the guys over here that don't want to get vaccinated, are they going to not be allowed into malls or something like that? Because in New York, that's what they're doing. I could kind of see the Philippines kind of doing that. I'm not sure. Maybe they will go towards that. Maybe they won't. I mean, some places are already, you know, put really cracking down on the va- vaccinations and stuff like that. They're telling people that, they, you know, they really want them to get vaccinated or you can't go here or you can't go there. So, I mean, we don't know what to expect. I'm lucky in my area it hasn't gotten that bad. You know, when we go into the mall, sometimes we have to sign in, sometimes we don't. It's really strange because when we went into this modified ECQ, the guy just flashes the thing at my arm, takes my, my temperature, and then just weighs me through without filling out any paperwork. But yet before this, we had to fill out all kinds of paperwork. And that was on a lesser quarantine. So you never know where you're going to be. It's up and down all over the place, with you know, whatever they want you to do. And then you walk into the mall, and in some of the restaurants, they want you to, you know, sign into the restaurant, take your temperature, you know. I mean, it, it gets to be like a bit much. Well, you know. They already took my temperature at the front door. You think my temperature is going to go up that much between the door and here? You know, and I'm only limited in that place for like two hours. They give you like a little slip that says you're allowed two hours. And sometimes they do give you that. Sometimes they don't bother. They really don't check you too much on the time issue. But they do give you like a little piece piece of paper basically giving you like two hours usually. Sometimes they forget to give it to you. They don't really check for it on the way out to make sure that you were in there only two hours. You know, so I don't think they even really worry too much about that 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 thing that much, as far as I can see. But you know, since I've been here, I expect issues here. I mean, even during during the non COVID time, I expected paperwork issues. I expected things to happen. You know, when I signed up for something or whatever, I expected things to be kind of difficult. One of the great things, though, about the SRV, if you stay in country. It's very simple. Each year you just get your card and I'm done. And you pay ten dollars for it if you're if you if you do the courtesy visa, you know, the special courtesy visa. With that, boom, ten dollars each year, and then you pay for the shipping charges to you and you're done. You know, and I have mine for three years right now because I got in before they they went to the one year thing. So they change it now to one year. Every year you gotta send in the ten dollars to get your new S R R V ID card. Okay? The great thing about that is I don't have to worry too much with that. You know, it's kind of kind of a nice thing. I don't have too much paperwork issues with that. That's a big saver. You know, versus the people with the tourist visa, these people got to go in every month. Sometimes they can go they can go as far as 6 months with it, but you have to kind of pay the person to to get that 6 month thing or whatever. You have to pay extra and, and all, you know. And some of these guys won't give it to you. Some people are telling telling me that they have to, you know, wink wink pay a little bit extra and they can get the 6 month thing or whatever. And I, you know, that's something I don't think is cool. You know what I mean? I just don't like that. I won't do that. It's a risk. You know, it's both the risk that that person has taken and you're taken by doing that. You know, it's just not, not cool. You know, because you can get in trouble for that just as he could get in trouble for that, for, for, for doing it. And some of those people do do that. I know people that are here that have been on the tourist visa, and I'll say this out loud, okay, that have been on the tourist visa for way over 36 months. I don't know how they're doing it, but they said that they do it because they know people or whatever. So however they're doing that, it's not cool, you know, because that might someday come back and and bite us in the butt. You know, when people go around things and they do things or they pay off people or whatever they're doing to get that done. And some of them are being very quiet about it, but there's a whole group of people that I've met that are doing this. You know, there's a whole group of them, you know, and that can turn around and make things difficult for American citizens, UK, Australian, or whatever in the future. Because when you do things like that, it hurts us. It makes us look bad. And it makes their officials look bad, too, because they, you know, they, people realize how, how corrupt the government is at that point. And there is a, a, you know, a lot to be said. We have to be careful of doing that. I tell people, stay away from that type of stuff, guys. And be very wary when people tell you, oh, just do this here and you'll get you'll get by that. Don't. Don't. You know, don't play that game. 
because it's a dangerous game you're playing when you when you know you give money to officials around here. Very dangerous game. Yet I know people that there's people here that do it. You know, I get it. Would I do it? No, I would not. I would just push to do it the right way and if it means more paperwork or to push through it, I'll do it that way, you know. I've had people hit me up for money before over here. I refuse to pay it. I'll go about it the right way and I'll even tell the people, you know, what are you looking for? And if the people are telling me that they're looking for this here, I'll tell them, oh, really? You know, like, is that what you're looking for? You know, and after a while, they kind of back down and they'll they'll do what they need to do. Is it, you know, it, it's, it's, I know it's kind of the way in the Philippines that some of these people want this stuff, you know, and you have to be careful. You don't ever want to get caught up in one of those things. It could be a sting. It could be something like that, you know could be a game that the guy's playing we did then he then he tries to arrest you or something like that saying that you tried to you know bribe him or whatever don't play that game there's been people that have gone to jail for stuff like that so be very careful when you play that game don't play it you know that's the best thing i can tell you is to stay away from that stuff i know people do it don't <laughs> don't <laughs> just simply don't do it you know i mean over here just push through it I know some days can be difficult over here with some things. I've been there. You know, I've been there before. You have to push through it. You have to push through it. You know, like I've said before, we're not in Kansas anymore, guys. We're not in Kansas anymore. Well, maybe some of you guys are, but I'm saying, you know, for us, we're not in Kansas anymore. You know, not that I'm from Kansas, but you know the expression. You know, it's a different world over here. You know, the United States is different when you come over here. Is it better over here for us? In some respects, yes. It's excellent. It's way better over here than it is back home in a lot of respects. Okay? As far as family and, 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 and living here, it's it's a great life. But do we run into paperwork and logistical issues or co- corruption issues or, or what have you? We, we run into that back home too. You know what I mean? You're going to run into it everywhere. You run into certain people sometimes that are kind of hard to do. To deal with sometimes it might mean you have to go to another place and go through that place just because you don't want to deal with the person at this place you know but for the most part i don't run into that i kind of stay away from that i've I've tried to do everything the right way and when you do things the right way over here you usually don't run into those issues it's the people that try to do things the wrong way that they get caught up in paperwork traps and things like that do things the right way that's the best advice i can give you here get the best visa the SRRV visa is one of the best visas over here. Okay, I'm not telling you not to get the tourist visa, by the way. You know, when those come back, that's a great visa. You know, because you can stay here for 36 months. Great visa. Awesome, fantastic visa. And there's other ways. There's the ballot buy-in, you know, all that. You know, um, there's, there's all different types of stuff you can come in here on. But be careful and do it the right way. Don't cheat on anything. Don't try to go around people. Don't try to do this or that. You know, if somebody higher up is telling you something and they say we'll do it do it this way or that way or that way then you know they probably know what they're talking about whatever and usually they're telling you the right way to go about it you know what i mean the way that always has worked you know and and i'm not i'm saying it's usually the correct way you know go the the right way you know find out what the right way is and you'll be you'll be fine you know but also, guys, when one of the things over here, and we do have people that are going to be coming in here soon with SRRV visas or, or whatever, probably within the coming months. Guys, be patient right now, you know, with the people that we deal with over here because they're going through the same mess that you're going through, you know, and that's that's gonna that's huge over here. You know, be patient with the guards because those people are stressed right now, just like we are, you know. But when you're over here, you are going to run into different things than you do back do back home. Just kind of go with the flow. You know, you're, you're over here. You're retired. You got all day. You know, so for me, I don't really let it bother me. You know, I don't get all frustrated. I try to be patient. And, and it makes my day that much easier because I got all day. If I don't get it done today, I can do it tomorrow. You know, I mean, that's the way life is in the Philippines here. They, they, that's the way Filipinos deal with it, you know. Filipinos are used to dealing with the crap that they see over here. To them, it's nothing. This is just part of life for them. It's just, you know, another day at, day at the park, you know. It's just part of life. It should be like that for us, too, 
you know, and make that part of your life and you'll succeed over here. It's a big part of my success story, you know, and a lot of people's success story over here is learning to deal with the good and the bad, you know, and it's just part of it. I have my bad days. You guys have even seen me on some of my bad days, you know, I let you know when I'm having a bad day. I want you guys to know the reality over here, what it is, you know, so when if I'm in a bad mood, I kind of sh- let, let that show on my video because I want to share that with you that, you know, this is the way it is over here. This is, this is, this is just, this is it. You know, this is the Philippines. This is the way, what we do every day. You know, we struggle, you know, we all struggle in life and you're going to struggle in life over here too. But you know what? In the end, it's more fun in the Philippines. God bless guys. Take care.